So hello again and welcome back to another making of video. This time we are talking about I was going to say one of the most famous songs, but I am going to say that in fact it is not one of the most famous songs. And there's going to be some uh uh this introductory part will be very different to what we have done in the past. You will realize soon why. And it has to do with first of all. Uh, let's put it in context. This is going to be the third Paso Doble that we bring to the postcards. The first one, if you may recall, was a very famous uh, Matador in Madrid. But the Paso Doble, the first Paso Doble in this series was El Relicario, extraordinary song. Second Paso Doble and just a few postcards postcards before this one was Silverio, Silverio Perez, written by one of the most famous Mexican composers, Agustin Lara. And this third Paso Doble now gives room to Maria Teresa Lara. Maria Teresa Lara, who was a sister of Agustin Lara. And there is something else that I want to share with you. And this very th in this thing that I want to share with you, and I am not expecting to make lots of politics out of it, but it's really been uh, bo uh, bugging me uh, for the past few weeks since the very first moment that I started working on this song. And well, first the positive songs, po positive uh, things of this. And uh, the score I usually put on the screen, the score that I actually used. This is not going to be the the occasion for this because now the score that I used is actually this, the one that I have. Uh, I'm not sure how you call this in English, but I, in Spanish we call it engargolados. I mean, I put it there. This is uh, how one could expect to find the scores of Mexican music, printed mu Mexican music, very old Mexican music. If you can see this is uh, what it actually looks like. I am going to put it there again because I want to, you to take a look at this. And I think you can, you may be able to read it there. Yeah. It reads, let me read it for you. If I did a poor job and you couldn't really actually read it yourself. It says, Novillero, Paso Doble. Letra y Música de María Teresa Lara, Supervisión de Agustín Lara. And if you see, the, if you could see, the, the front page actually has the face of or well a photograph of Mr. Agustin Lara and now in the words that's where one can discover actually that the composer is his sister not Agustin Lara but his sister Maria Teresa Lara that's where it started bugging me I'm not I, I mean if it is Maria Teresa who actually wrote it what is the need of then putting Agustin Lara in front. It is because they want to sell it and they say, I'm going to sell this score only if we put a name and an image that is three times bigger than the name of the actual composer, who is uh, Maria Teresa Lara, which means I am making use of the credit that the other composer has, his name, because we really don't think Maria Teresa can sell anything by herself. And I really don't like it where it says Supervision de Agustin Lara, which means that uh, she was actually supervised by his, by her brother, which he, I am pretty sure that he actually did, that he actually supported her with the creation of the song. But why could the name of the composer be much more important than the other herself? That's what, that's part of the thing that has been bugging me for the past weeks, because by doing this, I feel that we are taking credit. We are not giving her the full credit that she deserves. I mean, if I am the composer of something, yeah, I might have support cooperation of somebody else who will be given the credit in the corresponding place. But putting my name in a place where it is much, much, much more smaller than the rest of the front page and then insisting once again in the in the content of the score that I was supervised by someone else. I'm not sure. I, I, I really don't feel I really don't feel comfortable with that. Uh, I understand that there are a couple couple more songs that she actually wrote 
and that are also identified or ID as also as being supervised by her brother. I would really like to think that we need to give this full credit to her. So I will not refer any longer to Novillero as being Agustin Lara's creation, as in here, but I will insist on Maria Teresa Lara, who wrote this very beautiful, attractive song. Okay, a pause there, and now let's talk about. Uh, I was sharing with you that this is the third paso doble that we talk about, and it's going to be very interesting because in the first, uh, in the relicario, remember that we talked about a very consolidated torero already who unfortunately dies at the end of, well, while in one of his faenas, second by Agustin Lara, Silverio, talking about a magnificent torero as well, Mr. Silverio Perez, and this uh, tremendous music that accompanies the, the furor, the brio, the energy that the Paso Dobles and the Fiesta Brava have. And now it is time to talk about a novillero, uh, much younger, not in that level of consagration, if I may say, that has not reached that level of popularity because it is not now Silverio, Mr. Silverio Perez. It is now a young man that we, this time, we admire and support and we call him Novillero. He doesn't even deserve a name, but because he's only a Novillero. Anyway, what I really like about this song is that one feels and I won't be able to explain why, <laughs> and I, but I need to say it. One feels when one listens to the song and the lyrics that it was actually written by a woman. Because one can feel uh, the personality of a woman painting down like in a canvas, like painting this scene and painting a most a fragile man a novillero, a much younger man, he's going to be called later muchacho, just a boy, just a lad. That's how it is, the song refers to him, a very much younger. The brio and the music also takes us to the Fiesta Brava, but this is not now with the contundent music and notes of a consolidated man. Now the music is much more rhythmic and somehow reflects the fragility of this young man called a novillero and uh, it uh for the if anyone watching it is mexican may know that novillero ah, i have to make a, a small pause there let me share uh, something that is not going to be a secret i really didn't know the song before i chose to make it part of the music postcards. I have, I have shared with you in the past that I have a list, a more or less solid list of what is going, what it was going being planned to be part of the music postcards and that it has had some slight changes. Well, this is a major change because I didn't know the song and as a consequence, it wasn't part of the music postcards. But let me tell you the story on how it got there, got in here. As I was working on the Relicario, I felt that I really, I couldn't really mm, get the uh, the feeling the emotion of the paso dobles so i devoted a couple of hours at the beach watching out some uh watching listening some paso dobles and i ran accidentally into novillero by javier solis a very famous popular um, uh, musician singer and i recall that i heard his version and i told myself this song is splendid it has to be part of the music postcards so barely it's been four weeks that i heard that song that i looked for the accompaniment that i i knew that i had the score somewhere so my full archaeological work on this song took barely the past four weeks i don't claim i don't want to claim to be an expert of this song because i am not and i had to again confess that i in fact i really didn't know it but i have to confess that i really did fall in love with it so that's the reason why I am sharing this song with you. And I will not be sharing uh, the accompaniment because it has been already uh, spotted by YouTube as a copyright violation. Being this not one of the most famous songs by Teresa, or at least not at fa as famous as Granada, for instance, there are not many places where you can get a decent accompaniment of it. So, uh, as this has been spotted by YouTube, I will not be playing this, neither uh, 
uh, Javier Solis version, neither the one that I used, but we will go a little more in detail with the uh, lyrics. So if you don't mind, please join me to go into the lyrics of uh, the Novillero. So we talk Novillero. Un domingo en la tarde se tiró al ruedo para calmar sus ansias de novillero. So, on a sunny afternoon, he decided... Oh, I don't think I have the expression for that in English. Well, the expression, se tiró al ruedo, means that he decided to know the area where they actually do the bull, the bull fighting is called el ruedo. El ruedo is that area where they actually fight the bulls. So, on a sunny on a sunny afternoon Sunday on a, on a Sunday afternoon he decided to enter or to you know to throw himself into the ruedo so that he could calm all his anxiety of being a novillero so uh, from the very first two phrases uh, the uh, Teresa is sharing with us that this is uh, you know you know how how being young is like <laughs> even though some of us are not young any longer when you think that you can do anything then when you when you have all the energy for doing anything you want that's our novillero so right after that torero you know and there is a very interesting here interesting thing here because the first time you name him you just call him novillero but the next time you call him Torero, because you know that he is now a torero. Torero valiente despliega el capote sin miedo a la muerte. La Virgen, ah, make a pause. Torero, he's a brave man. You know that, that he's showing now his capote because he's fearless. He is not afraid of dying. Un domingo en la tarde se tiró al ruedo para calmar sus ansias de novillero. Then there is a very nice music. And then there is a very short pause in the music to give room to saying Torero, valiente, despliegue el capote sin miedo, sin miedo a la muerte. Because this very brave man is not afraid of dying. Torero, valiente, despliegue el capote sin miedo, sin miedo a la muerte. There is a very interesting phrase, phrase to follow that says, La Virgen te cuida. The Virgin, I had mentioned it in the past also uh, in the song Silverio, because I had mentioned uh, again that in Mexico the Fiesta Brava was very famous and Mexico was conquered by the Spanish. Mexico and Spain, be besides or as a, or as a consequence, of, consequence of having conquered by the Spanish, the Fiesta Brava was very famous until the late years of past century before they were prohibited, actually. But the reference to the Virgin is it's also uh, very common for Catholics. The Virgin and the Virgin in Mexico is, I mean, it means a lot for Catholics. So uh, the song makes reference that the Virgin is taking care of you, uh, Virgin Mary, because the Virgin, the, Mar the Virgin that is devoted in Mexico is Mary. So la Virgen María, so the Virgin takes care of you. She covers you with a very famous exp expression with her saint Manton, Manton de Manila, which of course we know that the Virgin doesn't have a Manton de Manila because that that would have to do with the Fiesta Brava, but making reference, you know, to the Manton that she has to cover her children. So the Virgin is taking care of you, covering you like protection, you know, that's what it means. Muchacho, te arrimas, lo mismo en un quite gallardo que en las banderillas. So, now we're saying that you are being protected by the Virgin and you, that are a very brave guy also, but you call, the, you call him again muchacho, making or insisting on his fragility. Muchacho, you get closer 
uh, there are several expressions on the actual movements of the torero. En un quite gallardo que en las banderillas, las banderillas I mean it's clear, quite gallardo means like uh, moving away from the from the bull and with this uh, gallard expression. Torero, quién sabe si el, si el precio del triunfo lo pague en tu vida y tu sangre. And that's basically the, the, the lyrics of the song. So there are repetitions. And there are a couple of things that I wanted to insist on. Remember that the song starts with a very lively music. Un domingo en la tarde se tiró al ruedo para calmar sus ansias de novillero. Torero valiente, despliega el capote sin miedo, sin miedo a la muerte. Where he says la virgen, a slightly higher note. The purpose of Teresa, that those are my thoughts, that that intention that also makes reference to the fragility of, you know, the bullfighter and the novillero himself, the fragility of them being in front of a bull that could easily take their lives. So you say, La Virgen te cuida. And this is the only two times in the whole song that we listen to that combination of notes. La Virgen te cuida, te cubre su manto, que santo mantón de Manila, muchacho. Every time the music goes to muchacho, referring to the novillero, the music tends to be softer, as I have insisted a couple of times already, like showing the fragility of this young boy. Muchacho, te arrimas. But besides, uh, even though I have said that he is fragile, at the same time with the music, we are uh, acknowledging his courage and bravery because now we say, Lo mismo en un quite gallardo que en las banderillas. Torero, quién sabe si el precio del triunfo lo pague en tu vida y tu sangre. The whole music, the, the whole song, if you see, it's uh, very simple in the sense that there are not many words, there are not many changes in the melody. But from my perspective, uh, Teresa Lara did a mas uh, wrote a masterpiece. Because it, what one can really feel the changes of the mood of the mood, not only with the music and the brio and the energy, but also on how perfectly she conveys the fragility of the young boy and people who are fighting the bull and who may end up paying their whole adventure, their whole, uh, you know, their whole task with their life under blood. That's what it actually means. You may die there. So, lo que paguen, que lo paguen tu vida y tu sangre. I hope you enjoyed this song as much as I enjoyed it myself. Uh, the, the music, even without words, I'm pretty sure you are happy with with Teresa Lara death. Uh, and I, I, uh, I will be looking forward to including another of Teresa Lara's compositions in this series. Thank you very much and I will be seeing you some other time soon. Bye bye.